for some reason, honestly, I do not understand what just happened. I do not want to blame anyone or the internet provider, but um, the 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 truth is that I'm I'm back here. Um, again, I will say thank you very much for joining me this evening, um, wherever you're watching me from. I am Miles is okay, and I would be glad to know where you are watching me from. I understand at this time that many of you are in the diaspora, so many of you will be watching me from the diaspora. And as it's, you know, be that as it may, there is something very uh, disturbing that has been happening. And that is very simple. Um, as many of you will know, yesterday evening, there was an attempt uh, on the life of uh, Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo, the illicit professor from Anambra State. Um, you know, when I had that yesterday evening, I reached out, I called him on, you know, to speak to him to understand what is actually happening. Sadly, he didn't pick calls. And um, I can understand that as well, you know, in that moment i know that a lot of people will be in his house but i was glad today to see that um, he was able to speak to channels tv so let me play his conversation with Sean okimba lawyer before and that's our prayer go out to the uh, prayer i mean uh, to the families and uh, we pray for the peaceful repose of the souls of these three policemen, very gallant ones that uh, had to be senselessly killed in this whole process. And a little bit of background, uh, I'm glad you corrected the fact that we were having an interactive town hall meeting. We finished the uh, diocese and prison mass, uh, which ended at about two and about four o'clock. They scheduled the interactive uh, town hall meeting with the Ethiopia youth, and by the way, Ethiopia happened to be my own hometown, um, was, uh, you know, took off. Um, I'm, a, I'm a village boy, and this is where I feel safest anywhere, anywhere actually in the world. I walk the street, I jog in my, uh, my community, I take long walks, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm everywhere I'm a, as, a, as a village boy, as it were. And um, with this interactive session with over a thousand youth seated, and I was just making a preliminary remarks to open up the interactive session with other dignitaries uh, from the community, a commissioner, an honorable member of the House of Assembly, former commissioners, mm. former uh, members of the House and the Tornisha, and several other dignitaries were in attendance. And just as I was about to wrap up, uh, said finally, uh, for there now to open up for comments, questions, and answers, gunshots. And uh, at first I thought maybe the policemen were shooting in and the air, the uh, you know, concurring with the kind of exuberance uh, in the hall itself. And until I began to hear people screaming and uh, all of that, and then everybody was campered um, for safety. Um, but then when it was all over, it took several minutes, more than 10, 15 minutes, of continuous gun battles, uh, going back and forth and stopping and starting it again. By the time we all came back, we saw three bodies dead and lying in the pool of their blood. There were the three policemen. And um, as I said, um, may God grant their soul and arrest. And uh, we'll continue to pray and support the families. And then the commissioner was uh, abducted. I understand where they were, where they ran and jumped the fence. Some people, even outside the fence, then grabbed him and took him away. Our prayers are with him, and we pray for his uh, safe return. But I must, as well, extend our gratitude uh, to our governor, ever supportive governor, William Biano, and uh, who is also a security czar. Before even I got home, he had called, and him and his team uh, swung into action. And uh, the commissioner of police and his crew the DSS, the Army, the Civil Defense, and so on. They all swung into action. They were all in my house yesterday. Uh, I must say I was uh, totally unhot, uh, not in any way uh, hot by this. 
And uh, so I, I mean, my gratitude to all of them because they went into very thorough and comprehensive uh, research. Okay, so um, before I continue, I will say may those, may the souls of those who died in that incident yesterday, those of our brothers and sisters that were senselessly killed in a bony state in, in Egedegede uh, two days ago, may their souls rest in peace. Amen. So, having said that, here are the points that I think that should concern all of us. Just as he said, like myself, you know, being local people that when you are at home amongst your people, you feel free, you walk around, you know, You've got no security around you. you. Who needs it when you are with your people? You walk around. You interact. You see the aged. You see the young. You see the youth. You see, you know, everyone. You should be happy being among your people. And that's what makes us human. And in this case, yes, he is contesting for um, election. And so what? You know, this is something that is abnormal and is crippling into this society. And we must talk about these things in order to ensure that they cease with immediate effect. Because if it continues, it's an ill wind that will do no one no good. It's an ill wind. You know, when I heard that, I thought about, you know, just like that, three police officers lost their lives, just like that. Three. These are people's dad, these are people's brothers, these are people's sons, these are people's, you know, these are breadwinners of their family. And suddenly, they all died needlessly. When I say needlessly, that's what it is. We thank God that the life of Soludo was spared. And you ask yourself, how come that suddenly this thing is happening? Especially in Anambra. And my, my constituency, basically. You know, I can't remember the last time we had such um, an incident. I can't. It means no one is safe. Now, I've been asking myself, who could be behind all this? Who could be behind all this? Remember in 2010, um, no, 2009, sorry, 2009, uh, before Yerodra became ill, Yerodra actually wanted, which Soluda later revealed, wanted Soluda B to be the governor of Anambra State. Uh, <clears throat> again, I was one of those that thought at that point that um, Soludo coming to become the governor of Anambra State was premature, or rather not premature, but not the right time. Reason being because the governor of Anambra State, in my estimation, was doing well. That is, in the person of Peter Obi. Now, replacing him halfway, you know, it's, you know, it's um, is in the right thing to do. I had wished that he took over from Pitovi. I had wished. Sadly, politics being what it is, being played by politicians, he was disqualified in 20, um, I think, uh, was it 2013? And um, Obaze, who Pitovi recruited from the United States then, uh, from the United Nations, was also disqualified. Victor may brought um, Soludo to Africa. Peter Wee brought in um, Abaze, who is from Ochucha. Sadly, two men, that's got two of them, they have something here to offer. Sadly, again, an embrace lost. 
Without being immodest, uh, permit me to say that Anambra State is the cradle of the Igbo nation. Without being immodest. And if Anambra State gets it perfectly right, Anambra State will lift the whole Igbo nation. You know, the way people think, oh, Nigeria, if Nigeria gets it right, Africa will awake. Some people could argue otherwise. We don't know. But there is this belief that if the entity called Nigeria gets it right, the whole of um, um, black race would have a place they could um, probably um, you know, be more comfortable with. But driving this point back to Soludo, Soludo you knew in the banking in you know in the banking sector the things he did. You knew how he's you know he's, he was able to uh, con uh, what they call the banking consolidation. Time comes when the people have called upon him to come home and help out to map out and move the state forward. Suddenly, what has never happened in a long while in the history of Igbo nation is happening. An attempted assassination and three policemen dead. This is no joke. Three policemen dead. This is no joke. It hurts. It hurts to see that uh, we would get to this point where we will play this type of politics because it's turning out to be politics of bitterness. Now, Without, you know, I don't know who is involved, so I cannot talk more on who is suspecting. But there might be three plans, yeah? You know, some have argued, or rather a school of thought have argued that it could be the political opponents. Others have said it could be some forces within the... Uh, um, federal government that doesn't want what I described before now to happen. Because imagine where people that really have something, when you when you begin to put your first, you know, your first 11, when you begin to put your best brains forward, rather than cucumbers and carrots, rather than men who would probably have nothing to offer but just to drive on convoys and um, make silly decisions on your behalf. But here is a man who have led um, several developmental initiatives as it concerns in the world. When um, Ohaneza called for the uh, developmental blueprint for the Igbo nation. Professor Soludo was the one that led the economic um, division of that, that eventually gave birth to what we know today as uh, an Igbo stabilization fund now being led by Professor Obu. Google his name if you don't know. You know, you know, these are things I personally, you know, somehow maybe at the periphery will get a little bit involved in or rather be in a room where the conversations are happening that sometimes I don't want to discuss about them because, you know, I want to see tangible actions and result before we can come to the open. But, however, for the things that have happened now, it has become imperative that some of these things will be discussed. Now, understanding all these things, what Soluda does and what he can do, and you're asking yourself, at certain level in life, then what do you live for? Isn't that legacy? That is no longer material acquisition of wealth. But it's about what you are going to leave behind when you are no more on this earth. Then you begin to ask yourself, who would want Professor Soludo dead? Who?
would want Professor Soludo dead. It's a tragedy. It is unbelievable that uh, you know in 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 twenty twenty. Um, 2021, that something like that would actually uh, happen. And I ask myself, no, not again. Not again that, that we will come back to a time where, you know, a time when people used to basically do the things that they do. You know, I remember when there was a time an Umbra State Government House uh, was burnt. But we've gone past that stage. I think also the interview with Channel TV was also good that he has shown signs that he is alive. I think, let me just play another clip for us to um, understand one or two things. Here. Can you confirm to us um, if you are interested in the number one seat that the governorship seat in a number of on what political platform? We know your political affiliation, of, of course, but uh, if, since you are here talking to us, uh, can you confirm to officially confirm to us? Well, I think it just without saying that, um, as you, you reported that at the beginning, that uh, a few weeks ago, I had started off what I call the um, very extensive consultative process uh, that might lead up to this, um, the decision and running for the governorship. I've consulted at the world, local government, state level, and um, widely within my political party, uh, uh, our progressive grand alliance, APGA, uh, in which I happen to be a member of the board of trustees. And, uh, if, and then we are also continuing the consultations uh, widely in Anambra, albeit that there have been wide demand across the state with hundreds of thousands of Anambra people demanding that I should um, run for this office. And so, uh, more recently, I began to indicate that, yes, if my party grants me the uh, honor of flying their ticket, and uh, that I will, I will be on the ballot uh, by the grace of that. And um, I guess part of what is fueling the theories of the political motivation, what happened yesterday, is that uh, several people Many people feel that um, while the election might be for us to lose if we're on the ballot, and that uh, if we're on the ballot, then many others or the others contestants in whatever party probably have their chances uh, reduced significantly, and therefore that the only way to increase their chance was if Saludo was not on the ballot. But like I said, I'm not believing um, any of those until the result is out. So yes. In very simple terms, uh, if, uh, after the wide consultations and we get on to June, and uh, my party gives me the honor of flying their tickets, we'll present ourselves to the Anambra people. And um, from all indications so far, I believe that by the grace of God, the Anambra people will um, endorse that choice uh, come November. You see, the beans is still in, in its raw stage. You know, as we say in Igbo, the beans is still in its raw stage where, you know, it's, it's, it's not yet uh, Uhuru and, and this is already happening, you know, in as much as he's trying not to blame anyone or kind of, you know, give meat to the converse or to the notion that um, it is the, the attempt on his life is politically motivated you know it's the, but still i found it really really shocking that something like this could happen so having said that and um, i will use the opportunity to urge the anambra state governor the you know the uh, uh, police the security agents that uh, everybody needs to be at alert and ensure that the perpetrator
this heinous crime are definitely brought to book because uh, we cannot continue to live in perpetual fear. Now, I'll move to my second point of discussion this evening, uh, which is on the CCT chairman and the Biafran boys' comments. Biafran boys. Okay, so I don't know if so many, if some of you have uh, actually watched the uh, the video of the CCT chairman, that is uh, Umar Danladi, who assaulted someone in the Banex Plaza, and uh, it's not, you know, it is. I would say it, it is enough tragedy that. An, an innocent security guard was assaulted by this man, but he added um, salt to injury when they now issued a statement and um, a press release and said that, yeah, uh, you know, the statement first was badly, when I say badly, badly. Riff, okay, badly, badly written. Um, the grammars, uh, Jesus Christ, it's it's you know, it's nowhere near anything a primary three person can actually write. Yet, the person that wrote it is um, a Kuta system man who. Uh, heads the PR section, then you ask yourself, if merit was the watchword, if merit was anything, or well, if merit means anything to them, would such a man who could not lace his ten tenses together ever smell such a serious office? But the answer, you would know with me that the answer is no, because obviously, um, when you have a godfather who sits there and everything revolves you, then uh, you know people could um, um, you know do whatever they want. Here you have someone who is head of code of conduct tribunal. That the of head chairman of code of conduct, meaning how you should behave, how you should conduct yourself. That is what you are heading. But what happened? The head of conduct. Rather, what then happened is the man goes out and assaults the poor. Apparently because obviously in Nigeria, yeah, um, you know, <laughs> no one cares. Because no one cares, the poor must die. So he goes out on this date and assaults this guy. Let me not play that video. But let me play us a video of a reaction from people now because obviously he has started you know the narration is now changing that uh, he has started saying oh he's moved away from the real issue and he's now saying oh is the Biafran boys then I ask myself how did Biafra come into this conversation how how did Biafra come into this conversation Barnett Plaza is not within the Biafran territory. The boy assaulted is no Biafran. So, you know, my head is spinning, trying to understand how Biafra got into it. But um, Aisha Yusuf, I think, reacted to that video. So let I me play say, what Aisha I, said. I, I, um, I, you know, when, when they say you know. somebody is shook it, I am absolutely shook it. I'm not even shocked. It's more than shocked. I am shook. The, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal Justice, Eladi, just said to people 
as yes boys really what somebody who came out and assaulted a security man his people i don't know who he was which slapped this person and himself also he was being held by police he went ahead and slapped and assaulted a man for doing his job and he asked the gods to come out again and refer to people as the what the freaking hell is going on in nigeria in an official sense in his mental mind in his in his in his in his thoughts he refers to people as biafran boys and yet he had the guts to also put it in black and white and refer to people as biafran boys eh, the right eye for head Oh my goodness, there's so much an absolute disrespect in this country from charlatans who legal let my people go mentality. We carry a real justice, otherwise, would he have if it was based on capacity, would he have been there? If it was based on the same capacity that is used for everyone when they say people are entering a, a primary a secondary school and all of that you have cut off mass some people have 120 something some people have two or four or six whatever if it was based on competence that employment was being made would he have been um, the justice of of tribunal when he cannot even conduct himself in public he has hurt someone and then he comes and gives a statement and that statement he pours pepper whatever a pet on fire and everything what the heck is going on in this country i mean all of this nonsense has to stop oh that man should is either be made to resign or sat or whatever he does if he can think of people and just go to a place and then uh, and call people Biafran boys. You understand? Just see a group of people and tell them and give them uh, a label Biafran boys. Then he doesn't have the neutrality. You see, when you listen to this manner of nonsense that, you know, <laughs> came out of this man's mouth. Then you begin to understand the the tragedy that we are in. I'll see if I can pull up this uh, uh, press release. Then you see that for yourself that um, this is really a tragedy, a tragedy, a tragedy in multiple plans. Let me quickly see if I can pull that up. You see that it is a tragedy in multiple plans. Okay. Now, this is worth the guy, the statement that uh, they issued. So let me quickly um, hold on, um, remove this. So look at this. So it says, my boss, my boss here, my boss instructed me to use the Biafran boys in describing those who allegedly assaulted Uma. That is a, that's a lie because no one assaulted Uma. Omar was the one that assaulted people. Look at here. The public relation officer of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, CCT, has revealed he was instructed by his, or instructed to use the Biafran boy. Now, remember, this is the same, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to call him an idiot, but this is the same man that was used in removing honor. Justice Onoe from Biafra State. Maybe the spirit of Biafra is haunting him somehow that he is seeing Biafra in anything he does. Because no connection between what, is, what he has done in the plaza and to the slab and to writing this jargon, this rubbish and nonsense. A statement released in defense of the chairman of the CCT, Umar Danladi, who, who allegedly assaulted a security guard at Barnett Plaza in Wuse Abuja, blah, blah, blah. The worst is that that statement is riddled with grammatical blunders. Look at the statement here. Our attention was uh, was drawn, look at it, see, the first sentence, our attention was drawn on a report 
from some online publication with a video, you see, a video cliff. Cliff. Jesus Christ. A video cliff. And these are the people governing you. These are the people governing you. And you wonder why the nation is in a mess. Hmm? You wonder why this nation is in a mess. If people like this are allowed to, you know, be in the court. And yet, look, yet, if, look at his name, Ibrahim Hassan. Uh, 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 Ibrahim Al Hassan, head of press and public relations, is writing this manner of primary one jargon video cliff, suggesting Honorable Ch Honorable Chairman Justice Dan Ladiwe Y Omar assaulted a security guard at Barnet. You know, this guy should actually go to jail. Sorry, you know why? Not only that his grammar can send can even resurrect. A dead person. Secondly, he's already lying because it is on record. You see, that's one thing these uh, useless big men that that um, somehow found themselves in the corridors of power don't understand. People were actually videoing that. And one thing they don't even know is I, I commented this morning in a, in a, in a forum and um, I said... Um, I said the following, that in, in his tiny bleached brain, he thinks he was, uh, sorry, um, he thinks when he says Biafran boys, everyone will momoishly stop talking of his disgraceful act. Thank God for the gallant Ududwa cameraman, because actually the guy that recorded it, you can see from, hear from his accent that he's a Europe person, um, the Ududwa cameraman exposed him, Maybe it is a Biafran and Oduduwa Kababo that exposed him. You know, sometimes I wonder if those in authority reason via the orifice. As if Nigeria cared about the ethnic affiliation of the man being assaulted. He could be Nupe, he could be Fulani, he could be Yoruba, he could be Iwe, he could be Gwari, Ijo, Mumuye, Hausa. I don't bloody care the ethnic identity of the man being assaulted. But no one also cared because the moment the assault started, the humanity of everyone was what is at play, not where he or she came from. That is not the issue. All the people cared was that a fellow citizen was being assaulted by a man in authority with security details. And I concluded I said he must be ashamed. Now to talk about that this man assaulted another and now to put up this manner of rubbish to start with. The said plaza has been his usual place visit for the past 18 years. Oh yeah. So you visit there. He press his phone. Okay. Blah blah. Unfortunately, yesterday altercation started over a parking lot. Which chairman met vacant and it was directed it was directly opposite a shop he want to make a purchase and fix no look 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 at how he, he spelled fix and this is something an idiot a confirmed cucumber wrote and sent out as press release ignore autocorrect you, you think that person is normal maybe he's uh he's uh He's uh, he's been he's been on, on under the influence of uh, uh, fermented kunu. Hmm? Maybe he's under the influence of fermented kunu for him to be writing such jargon. In it's not even a first. Listen, you know, reading this, the one that will make you mad is look at this. Look, it says the beast man seen in the video cliff again. The idiot continues. The video cliff where. Not the chairman's police team. They were police men operating around the plaza whom at first distance intervened before the arrival of the police team from Maitama police station. As the few policemen in the complex were, you know, apparently overwhelmed by the mob. As if this is not the same view we all saw. 
consisting of now you see when the mob now the mob is consisting of Biavram boys throwing match <laughs> the, my computer will soon destroy itself my computer will just simply at some point say oh God, no do again i'll just offer myself hmm? causing damages to the car smashing windscreen blah 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 see why were you and they see he put the Biafran boys you know if you understand why he used the Biafran boys uh root tv did a very fantastic job which i'll play for us today where they've gone and and um, interviewed people to talk more on what actually happened and they, you know from what they, they said the event didn't end there that the man was assaulted the event didn't end there they gone ahead and also after the whole thing dss in the evening came arrested the man beat him up this one is no longer on camera beat him up tore his clothes broke part of his spinal cord uh broke his uh his lips you know um smashed his head on stone where he has gone for i think x-ray yesterday or oh, um, and now he's still in station they are now talking about flying him flying the individual abroad that is a society where all that is going for the idiot is that he was used in removing Nonogen and he is obsessed with the concept of Biafra. That's all. That's all. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can, uh, you know, uh, if I can get the video from Root TV. Um, yes. So, you know, I, I wish it would play, but it will give us an insight of No, this one was another person, happened. the person who picked his phone. It's not the person who he slapped. This one was another, a friend of mine. I said, as I'm talking to you, he's so look, this, this is police yeah, station. I was there yesterday night. Still now, as I'm talking to you, boy who didn't do anything, he just picked your phone and returned from what you do was Somebody you send you your you men to go and him at the road. It in time. Because he picked your phone or you, you, you just to do him that doesn't have his right, he doesn't know his right. They messed him up. I wish I had the video I would have showed you here. They messed, they messed him up. Man, that lady, um, that lady said that him you will call the IG and CP, that they are going to now, jail the boy for 50 years. This guy it's only God that can, no God, even God cannot even must, rescue the boy you know, from honestly, his hand, only dead. I don't bloody care where that the is guy to say that he want the boy to die. Is Ibo, is Yoruba is such an injustice that really gets some of us really angry because this is clearly a case of injustice to a man who has done absolutely nothing and they are this is they're threatening to jail this guy for 50 years for doing what for returning a phone Let me, um, I don't know. I think the video on the other end is this not playing fine. Let me see if I can uh, uh, get back to the original this, source. Uh, and, uh, security, security okay. guy and him, they started having issues. They started beating the security. It was this place. It was this place. They started beating up. Okay. Up the security guy. But this was a very. Okay, so. Now, the, the guy's colleagues, everyone started talking. Listen to this. You messed him up. Man, that lady, Uma, that lady said that him, you will call the IG and CP, that they are going to jail the boy for 50 years. It's only God that can, and no God, even God cannot even rescue his hand, only dead. That is to say that he want the boy to die.
they started beating up. Mm. So, that where he hit the, the pregnant woman that was about to enter the shop. So that was where this whole thing started. And before he now drove and packed to this. So you can see that where he hit at the end of the day. The, that was about the bottom to line the is that, um, so that was where this, this guy not before only he that he assaulted the individual, and back to this place. he also threatened that, was that he will be jailed for 50 years, that even and God that was never now watch that statement. The, uh, uh, and this started, was collaborated started making by three different people, all this and that, three and different people, people that such statement was made. And then, uh, 50 God years. Will not help him. That was and one of the guys started. that came close to them so, said then, something, so they, uh, I can't remember what he called it, I think there is a substance, they said the driver was, the gate. his that was lips, what? his tongue, exactly everything happened. was like the stations, blue, our boys, the 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 around, when they take to move the car so, so that they will be accessible the in the plaza, this then the guy that we session at the car park, his name is Clement Sagwa, and that is something that is no good a man drove a car, and when he came to the car park, Again, then he was moved around the ring. He hated somebody, a pregnant woman. Within the corridors then of power. he went apart roughly and the security Listen, guard walked to him. Is he said, sir, please, the you car was not parking well. Can you prop repark forever. it properly? Do with power because tomorrow you might not be there. And when they start coming after you, you see so many of you now, when the EFC is the uh, start coming after you, all we will be hearing is, oh, it's witch hunt, it's witch hunt. With which? Eh? With which they hunt you? Witch hunt, witch hunt. What you're doing today could be used against you tomorrow. I don't want this broadcast to be long. On that note, I will say, once more, before I conclude, I would, my heart goes out to my brothers, my sisters, our brothers, our sisters that died in Ebony State. Uh, in the wee hours of uh, Tuesday, where in an unprovoked headsman attack. And uh, we've been reaching out. I do understand that Ebony State is doing a lot to, you know, stop the provocation. But one thing that I must I must tell headsmen is this. When I listened to the governor, the governor said that he was giving them meaning, he acted humanely, treating them like humans. But they never reciprocated in treating their host communities as human. Doi Okukbe the other time talked about the Igbos apologizing for the death of Sadwana that died in 1966, cool, January. Yet no one is talking about apologizing for the 3 million deaths of the Igbos. No one is apologizing for half a million deaths of Igbos in the uh, uh, the program that happened before the outbreak of the war. The governor said that two headsmen were killed before and those that were behind it were arrested and they are facing the law. If this reckless and unprovoked killing happened as a result of you know let's say that uh, retaliation as they uh, you know as they said then one would now wonder why the retaliation when you evaded those who were unprovoked did those who want to retaliate when you the forest of Oyo, did the people of Oyo retaliate? Why must there be only one people? Only one people. You will go to Burkina Faso, you cause mayhem. 
You come to Benue, you're displacing people, you're causing mayhem. You go to Southern Kaduna, you're displacing people, you're causing mayhem. Now you've come to Ebony, you're displacing people, you're causing mayhem. Ndi Ibose, Abombo Atunogwe, Ababo Atunogwe, Abrogonogwe Kapi Alako. You are not the only one that has a means of retaliation. You are not the only one. That sometimes the people want to accommodate you, but you come with your primitive way of life. When people come into communities, they go into towns to live and pay rent and add value to the community. But when you come into communities, you decide to ravage the community and add no single value. No single value. No single value. Not You don't pay tax. You don't pay house rent. You virtually of no value to the ecosystem. Virtually of no value to the ecosystem. And you think you retaliated and killed innocent men, women, children in Ebony. That will be your last. On that note, I will say thank you very much for joining me this evening. Once more, I am Mazi.